very, very well today. Because we are all interacting together. But we just take two questions. Can you get your guys ready, please? We'll take two questions. Well, thank you. Um, we, we did talk about the three types of people. And then this question came to my mind. Now, many get furious of, and some even get insulted when they are being opposed. And sometimes many feel because they are more educated or richer. Now, if you have such people as friends, how do we deal with them? When you, that you means that you are the one opposing them. Yes, no. yes who wants to help us? The now, the question is, you, we are turning the table round before we are talking about people who oppose you. But now he is saying, if you are the one, you have a friend, and you are always opposing this friend, but the friend gets bitter at you. He gets angry with you for opposing him. How do you handle such situations? <laughs> Simple. Uh, yes? It depends on the way you oppose. I, I, I think uh, sometimes, you don't, many a times, we don't oppose people or do wrong to people because we want to. It could be our background. So once you identify that you are becoming an opposition to a good vision at the burden of Joseph, the best you can do to yourself is to admit your position as being very critical and confess to the person that I don't mean to hurt you, but this is who I am and I need your help. And that person will help you out of that for you to become who he, he or she is. That's provided you are not generous. Yes, you must accept it. Provided like you are the yes. yes. You know, uh, let me share an experience I have with you. While I was in school, in the church where I was, where I was, I think I was gifted. And there is this younger person, myself and the most senior brother of their family, where I Age mate. So uh, each time the pastor is traveling, he practically hands over the church to him. And I was wondering, I'm here. This pastor does not even see me. He does not even look at me. Why this small boy to begin to rule over us? And when I took offense at that, and suddenly I realized that I hated him. Like many of you would do, I did it. When we are in a place we are discussing and he walks in, I will move away. Because I didn't want to have anything to do with him. But then one day, I sat down and I said, why are you angry with this boy? And I answered, because I am jealous. Sorry. Huh? That why should pastor take him instead of me? And I said, now that is not good for my life. What will I do? I needed to repent. So I repented, but then found an opportunity. One day after church, I called him. I said, why please come? He said, it's now a, a pastor in, um, in, in UK. He's been there for now for over 25 years, pastor in church. I said, why do you come? I said, do you know I hate you? Huh? He said, what? I said, yes. I said, secondly, do you know I'm jealous of you? He said, eh? Ah. <laughs> I said, no, I just want to confess to you what is going on inside of me because I need to be free. That's right. Sometimes you need to be open for you to move on in life. Check the reason why you feel the way you feel. Ask yourself questions. Be open to yourself. Because the worst enemy you can be is to be the enemy of your own life. By deceiving yourself. When you know the truth and you try to, 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 to find suitable answers to yourself, you are not helping yourself. 
So that's why I think if you are being critical of somebody, no matter your background, ask yourself, am I true to this person? Or I just don't like him? Yes, sir. Uh, I want to say that what happens, question, you are married to a very negative, as a man, you're married to a very negative wife. Mm -hmm. Or as a husband, you are, as a, as as a, a wife, as a wife you're, married you're married to a very negative husband. Mm -hmm. What do you do? For, for better, for worse. Yeah. I wanted to say something concerning what my brother okay, said. Okay, quickly say it so that we, we, we take the second question. Um, regarding this question, sometimes your, your motive might be genuine, but some people don't like to be corrected. Let's say you are working in a place and you have a superior, or you have an elder brother. You know, when you say something to them, even if it's right, you just feel you act like you know. But I want to paraphrase the scripture which says, you say, if you correct a wife, but if you rebuke somebody who is a fool, he will hate you. There are some people, if you correct them, you will not be able to stand what he or she is going to do after. In fact, it will cause you problem. You will be, I mean, you will really have peace. So, personally, in such situation, you should really, uh, you know, take your time. Sometimes you be prayerful of how to correct such people. You know, uh, yeah, I think, yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah, that's um, uh, another uh, side of the coin. Uh, very, very important as well. So to my dear brother's question, you're married to a negative husband or a negative, somebody who is negative in thoughts and all that. What do you do for better or worse? We just hang on and I tell the person that well, there is nothing I do that is perfect or that is right in this present sight. Oh. negative like 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 the person as well. Wow. Wow. That's that a few hands up there. A few hands up there. Let's hear the woman's voice first. I think sometimes we spend so many times trying to change people when we're in some type of relationships. I believe that sometimes it has to come to a point that you have to accept the reality and accept that this person is like this. It's either I'm ready to condone and live with it and use it for my benefit rather than to sit down and use your whole life trying to change someone that will never change. Mm. Food for thought. <laughs> yes. Um, yes. And to me, I think there is no one who cannot listen to people. Or there is no one who is permanently just negative. There must be a way that you can approach the person and the person will get to hear you. Or if not you, you can use the person that the person is very close to, to an individual. So no man is just permanently negative, or no woman is just permanently negative that cannot accept correction. In one way or the other, there is a way. It's just a matter of you sitting down and really thinking and checking yourself also. Because many times we tend to point all our fingers and forgetting that, really, I always also have a problem. So that's it. Thank you very much. Let's put our hands together for that contribution. Yes, I think, to um, some extent, I would prefer a negative one because, <laughs> yes, um, <laughs> a negative one, the truth of the matter is, she needs something to be positive. That's why she's negative. There is something. It's true. Look at look at the, the look at the film of a of, of a camera. Okay. Why do we always want negatives? When when the man takes the picture, we say, "Give me the negative." Why? Because because, because the negative is what you use to 
transformed. Look in the Bible, most of the great men of God were very negative people before. They were very negative, they were all committing all sort of sins. But the truth of the matter is, the negative there is the key. No, or if you have a negative one, but no, you have a negative one, you have a negative one, okay, and use that negative to bring down something in the positive. Thank you very much. That is a very, very useful one. Very, very useful. He's right. We, we just agree that we can't throw off this person from our life. Number three, we can't throw them off. In fact, they are the best. They are the best because they make you think. When you think you have gotten it, they are telling you what have you done? <laughs> what? This person just did it. The other person just did it. So what? Get, get, get lost, get lost, my friend. Then you go back. You must go back and start thinking again. Don't you have a negative wife? Thank God. <laughs> you have a negative husband? Thank God. Huh? Both positive and negative, when they meet together, they will give you uh, the balance. Because life is a blend of both. Before you can have lightning, there must be negative forces and positive forces clashing together. They give results. Daniel, I give you kudos. <laughs> I just think that uh, if you have uh, a wife who is negative or a husband who is negative, it's because you are positive. And what you need to do is to try as much as possible to love him. Because we're talking about relationship. Relationship is first of all built on love. It is not because the person is negative. It's because you think and you're seeing the person negative. And what the person represents is just the opposite of what you have. Use it to your advantage and build a better future for your family. And don't forget, let's put those hands together. The theme of this meeting tonight is how to leverage ungodly relationship for advancement. That's what we have been looking at. Determine that which is godly. Take advantage of it for the best benefit of your life. But remember, don't be a user. Be a giver. Commit something into every relationship until that relationship fails you that it is not worth what you have. Then withdraw it. But if it proves to you that it's worth what you have, keep it up. And God will help us in the name of Jesus.